So we're diving right in. We've got about five pounds or nearly 80 ounces of raw chicken breast in the Instapot. And we've got two cups of just plain water on top of that. We're gonna give that a strong, probably couple of teaspoons of Himalayan salt. And then we're just gonna get the lid on and we're gonna end up seasoning these uh, pulled chicken product two different seasonings, which is why we're doing it that way. And so that's about five pounds, so it's six minutes a pound. Um, we're gonna go pressure cook high, and we're gonna turn this down to, I'm just gonna round up and just say five times six is 30, which it is. And we're gonna turn off, keep warm, because we basically want it to naturally cool. And once it does, then we will pull the chicken, drain the, the broth, and uh, do two different batches of seasoned, basically pulled chicken. One uh, planning on like a, a verde type chicken for tacos on the trail, and then another one more of a chipotle red sauce based uh, pulled chicken. So it's on, and we'll come back to it when it's done. It has completed cooking and we're just waiting for the pin to drop right now. And once that does, then we're gonna take it out, set the chicken aside, and then we're gonna be completing this dish three breasts at a time. Uh, so there's six breasts total in there. And the first seasoning that we're gonna go with is kind of the uh, chili verde style pulled chicken. So we're gonna take the liquid out and put it in this big measuring cup and then we're going to take two cups of whatever that broth is put it back in here along with one packet of chorizo taco seasoning and one packet of al pastor taco seasoning and um, then we're going to add to that 12 ounces of the onions and green peppers. And then we're gonna reduce that because this will have some water in it because it's frozen. And we're gonna reduce it a little bit. And then we're gonna add the green chilies, a can of rotil, and then we'll add the chicken, the shredded pulled chicken once we pulled it back in there and we'll kind of finish it off with um, the salsa verde uh, before loading it into some harvest dried freeze dry trays to freeze them and get them into a freeze dry cycle. So we're just gonna wait for it to release and then we're gonna do all that. Okay, the pin has now dropped. So we're gonna open it up. No, 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 that probably took nearly an hour for it to drop on its own. We're gonna grab some tongs and you can see it looks like a lot more liquid there now than there was before. So we're gonna grab some tongs and get these moved to a plate. And we ended up with about five cups of stock and we're gonna go ahead and put two cups back in the Instapot and start adding our taco seasoning. We're gonna use El Pastor and chorizo. And then we're gonna add these onions and peppers and then we're gonna reduce it because this is gonna give up a lot of extra water. And we really don't need more than two cups per three chicken breasts, uh, which is a little, it's about two and a half pounds raw. Uh, equivalent and uh, for the three chicken breasts. So we're gonna go ahead and get that in here and turn it on to uh, probably saute low and just let that reduce before we add the other stuff. Here we go. Okay, so we've got the two cups of chicken stock in there. 
the 12 ounces of frozen onions and green peppers, and then the two seasoning packets that uh, I liked. And of course, if you wanted to use fajita or make your own, you know, Mexican inspired, Tex-Mex inspired seasoning, then you could do that and uh, add it here. So we're going to give that a stir, let it go for about 15 minutes. It's on, but it's bringing it up to temperature, and I think I've got it set for 15 minutes. We're just going to let it saute and reduce a little bit before uh, we add the green chilies and the rotil and um, get the chicken pulled and get it in here and add the salsa verde. Okay, it's come up to temperature, so it's going to go 15 minutes on low saute. And one of the things is that uh, you'll want to make sure to kind of stir it periodically. Um, otherwise, you know, it seems like the seasonings, especially before they dissolve completely, they tend to settle and kind of build up on the bottom. And we want all that goodness dissolved in the stock. So uh, probably don't want to walk away from this for 15 minutes and come back to it. Just uh, let it go for a few minutes and check it. So that's what we're going to do for the next 15 minutes. 14 minutes now. Okay, so the first 15 minutes has completed of sauteing on low. And that's still um, more liquid in there than I'd like. So I have went ahead and turned it back on. And it's going to come back up to temperature. And we'll go for another 15 minutes making it 30 minutes total saute on low. Okay, while we're on our second round of uh, sauteing to reduce, we're gonna go ahead and add our can of rotil. And this one is diced tomatoes with lime juice and cilantro. Uh, the habanero one is pretty good as well and it doesn't seem to be super hot. And then we're gonna add a can of green chilies. And we're leaving the liquid in here just to help, you know, condense the flavor through reduction. Uh, if you don't like that, then by all means drain the liquid because we're not gonna need all this liquid to get the seasoning into the pulled chicken. And then uh, when we freeze dry it, we're just pulling the water out, so. We're going to go ahead and let that go. This is almost up to temperature, and then it's going to start counting down to 15 minutes, and I think that'll be good enough for us here this time. So uh, we're going to go from there and see you back here in a minute. Okay, so the chicken breasts have cooled off, which is why they look a little funky. And so this is half, and that's half, and so this is a breast, one breast, one breast. And so together, this was about five pounds raw, pre-cooked, and they were roughly the same weight, two and a half pounds um, between three breasts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just go ahead and start shredding these like this. And I'm actually gonna use, put the camera down and use two hands. And then we're just gonna put that into the pot and we're gonna do that with all three breasts and uh, get it stirred up and reduced. And, and this is what that two and a half pounds uh, fresh weight, pre-cooked weight, uh, looks like. And we're just pulled and we're just gonna mix that in here to our seasoning really well. We're going to stir that around for a couple more minutes just to make sure that it's incorporated everywhere equally. And then we're going to go ahead and add uh, some of the salsa verde to it. Okay, we poured out a cup of the salsa verde and we're just going to get that poured in there and mixed up.
And if you wanted this greener, you could just leave out the can of Rotil and uh, season it with some less red seasoning packets. But for me, it just adds a little bit of tomatilla flavor. And uh, I think you'll be able to tell the difference. So we'll find out once we hit the trail. And Okay, well, we're gonna go ahead and add the remainder of this 16 ounce jar of salsa verde because one of the seasoning packets that I used, it already has kind of a chipotle flavor to it. And I haven't added any chipotle peppers or chipotle pepper sauce into this yet. And um, in any case, I'd like to tamp that down a little bit so the next one is more pronounced, you know, a different option. But in any case, we're gonna go ahead and prepare both of these. I'm not gonna go through the whole process again of making the pulled pork taco seasoning for the red version with the chipotle peppers. Basically season the pulled chicken the way you want and get it into the freeze dryer. So that's what we're gonna do next is load these up on trays and get them loaded in. Yummy. Here we are after 60 hours and this is some of the pulled chicken taco product that we made it is definitely hot on the outside I mean it feels hot we're gonna break it apart right there and we're going to take a look at this piece where it's a little darker color. It does feel hot, but uh, we're going to check that just to make sure. So I'm going to use two hands for that and break it open. All right. Broke it open right where I said we would, and it's completely freeze dried. Nice and crumbly and powdery. So no problems there at all and it tastes great too because i tasted it so we're going to go ahead and take that out in a second i'm sure if that one's done this one's probably done we will check it when we take it out to make sure and if there are any darker spots and certainly if there are any cold spots we'll break it open and feel the inside of those uh, just to make sure but I'm pretty sure if that one, that this was the thicker one, I think. And so if it's done, I'm sure that's done. And then this is the refried beans and, um, you know, it's super crumbly. We'll check that when we get it out of the freeze dryer. And assuming that everything is uh, good to go and it doesn't need more dry time, then we'll go ahead and start the defrost cycle. And you can see there's a ton of ice here. So there was a lot of water in this batch, even though we tried to reduce, um, you know, the liquid from this chicken tacos, pulled chicken, uh, there's still just a ton. So we'll try and get this defrost started, get this stuff bagged up. Okay, this is the pulled chicken with the um, salsa verde sauce in it. And it's just a little bit less red than um, the other pulled chicken taco meat that we did but this is completely dried so we're going to get it bagged up and ready to go well i hope that was helpful uh we did a couple of different uh seasonings of this pulled chicken we've got it bagged up like you've seen in other videos that we do here on the channel in these temporary thinner uh, more economical bags and we typically take food out put them in here immediately add the oxygen absorber uh, seal the zipper and uh, can hold over there for quite a while before going into permanent long-term storage 
Um, in, in this case, these products are going to be uh, packaged in seven and a half mil uh, aluminum mylar uh, gusseted bottom uh, bags so that we can put the product in there, vacuum seal it in the harvest right, freeze dryer, uh, and then divvy it up amongst the backpackers that are going with uh, me on our 2021 Wind, Wind River Range uh, backpacking trip, a 10 day unsupported trip where all the dinners, I mean, primarily we're having freeze dried products uh, for every dinner meal and some of the lunches. And so the rehydration part of this product, make sure to stay tuned for those vlog uh, trips coming up and you're gonna see us prepare those, uh, rehydrate the product and then use them different ways. We make some quesadillas and other things with them. So stay tuned for that content coming out. If you haven't subscribed yet, take a minute, hit the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell and select the option that gets you notifications uh, every time new content comes out on the channel. Also, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. That's supposed to help the, the channel algorithm. So uh, it's a small thing, but uh, supposed to be helpful. I don't really know. Uh, anyway, uh, if you're also inter interested in additional content of things that go on around Frosty Sith, uh, you can check out Frosty Sith on Instagram and Snapchat and uh, get a little bit of extra content there, bang for your buck. So check that out and thanks for joining and remember, whenever you can, get up, get out, live a little. See ya. Peace dried taco meat we've rehydrated it and added a little bit of cheese to it and now we're just gonna make some tortillas add a little bit of sour cream roll them up and good to go